What's up guys, it's DDP from the Dallas Prospect. Here today with some rather distressing news. By now, surely all of you have at least heard about it. Maybe I can enlighten you on some of the details. But yes, once again, David Irving has been suspended by the NFL for four games for violating the substance abuse policy. Now for those counting at home, David Irving missed four games last year for PEDs. Now in that case, it was a substance uh, that they deemed he was taking as part of his supplement. Whatever the case, he missed four games. We're talking about a guy who has not been able to get it right and keep his off the field distractions out of his way his entire career. A guy was released from Iowa State from the football team, went undrafted in the NFL draft, failed to make the Kansas City Chiefs roster so he was put on practice squad, came to the Cowboys, and has shown several flashes over the last three years, but as I mentioned before, had the suspension last year for PEDs, had the drama earlier this summer with the ex-girlfriend, now ex-girlfriend, hacking his Twitter account and making all these serious allegations. Then, you know, this is something that he can't control really at this point, but he, he's had the custody battle and everything over his daughter, issues there. That one I don't hold necessarily against him, although it does tie to that ex-girlfriend and baby mama. All the same, that that's one where it's like, well, once you've already made this mistake, you can't always avoid this other one over here. But now, man, this one, this one really drives me crazy. This latest one, because not only is he an unrestricted free agent this summer, we're talking about a guy, and I, I was, earlier this offseason, man, I was going nuts for Dallas to give him a long-term deal. I said, a player of that ability, of that rarity, you're willing to put up with superstar talent more than you'll put up with other talent. That's that's why guys like T.O. for the longest time kept finding jobs and kept finding work because the production warranted it. But eventually that has to eventually that has to produce something. In David Irving's case, seven sacks in eight games last year, missed the last four with a concussion, missed the first four with his four game suspension for PEDs. Now, <laughs> now we're talking about this one and this one is especially inexcusable. This wasn't him failing a drug test. This was him missing drug tests and not reporting in. So this is literally the league saying, hey, you didn't return this call and you missed this drug test. Here's your makeup date. Oh, you missed that as well. Okay, here's the suspension because now based on our policy, we have to essentially assume you failed it. And from Mike Fisher and all that, I'm hearing he, he didn't fail a drug test. He simply didn't focus and didn't follow up on it this is like it's mind-boggling right because as i said he is an unrestricted free agent next year right now this season he was supposed to be playing on a one-year second round tender which is a 2.9 million dollar deal because of this suspension he's now giving back essentially six hundred thirty-five thousand dollars of that money because the cowboys obviously don't have to pay him if he's not playing so he's losing that money and being his second straight year with a four game suspension, he's hurting his marketability. I'm telling you, man, all these teams are going to look at him and they're going to say, kicked off his college team, undrafted, had the issues with the drama alleging domestic abuse earlier this summer, missed practice and was absent from the facility. Four game suspension last year for PEDs. Four game suspension this year for substance abuse. They're going to take note. He would have been getting probably something in the neighborhood of 14 million a year on his next deal, which at this point I was already assuming wasn't going to be with the Cowboys. I said that the Cowboys were going to get one monster year out of him where he was highly motivated, and he's not even showing he can do that. I mean, what more what more can you say for the guy, right? I get it. You've got off-field stuff that's distracting. I, I feel for you in that regard. But man, the the PED thing last year, 
the missing drug test and all that this year, I, I don't get it. And Mike Fisher was on 105.3 The Fan earlier today talking about how teammates have reached out to him. Teammates have said, hey, let's do lunch tomorrow. Or, hey, let's go out and uh, you know go to dinner, drinks, whatever. Let's basically just hang out. They're trying to keep him around, keep him involved. Because kind of like a guy like uh, Randy Gregory, although Gregory is more of the failing drug test variety, at least in the past. Thankfully, haven't heard anything on that uh, since, I believe, July of 2016 with him. Or 17. But... With David Irving, he's flaking on these guys, according to Mike Fisher. He's not showing up for lunches. He's not meeting up with guys when they make plans. He is off in his own world. He is isolating himself. And I don't know if he's in a situation where it's like a needs a medication kind of thing. Like if there's maybe some bipolar thing going on there. I don't know what it is, but you want to root for a guy who says, you know, I'm just trying to do right by my daughter. I'm trying to do what's best. I'm going to come in and do my job, and I'm going to work hard. All this is behind me. This is what he said yesterday. So for him to get hit today with this suspension, what what does that say? First of all, did he know yesterday that this news was going to be coming down? Surely, if he missed those drug tests, he had to be aware, right? It's not like this hit him out of left field and he's like, whoa, whoa, what drug test? What what did I miss? There's no way. And, you know, there are people who say the Cowboys should be should have been doing more to help him. Maybe, yeah. But at the same time, what, to what degree are you going to hold the guy's hand? I, I've said it. He is a game wrecker for opposing offensive lines. He is a monster. Seven sacks in eight games last year. That's phenomenal production especially when you have Demarcus Lawrence on that line as well, who had 14 and a half sacks last year. So it's it's one of those crazy things. Like the Cowboys defensive line does look like it has more depth right now, especially if they do get Randy Gregory back. But they look like they have more depth right now than they've had in several years. That's great. But you don't have anything that will replace David Irving in terms of what he can bring to the table. So it's just, it's crazy to me that he's now out. Now we know... Let me think. I'm trying to think of the schedule here. I know he's out for Carolina. I think we play the Giants in week two. Also misses at Seattle and at home hosting the Detroit Lions. So that that's four games, man. Four games you really need. The Giants, I'll say this. The Giants, I don't think, are going to be that much better next year. You might, want, you might miss him if Saquon can do some stuff. But the Giants O-line got better. I don't think it got better significantly better i like will hernandez a lot but as Vach lombardi pointed out last night uh on dallas prospect live they moved him eric flowers from left tackle to right tackle to make room for nate solder well, the problem with that is the best defensive ends are going to come off of that right side so you took your worst offensive lineman and you put him in an even more difficult to protect situation will hernandez will help a lot in that interior but the styles of the linemen they have don't necessarily mesh. It's kind of like a Frankenstein's monster. And even then, they got two good pieces and the rest is just kind of eh or eh. So I I don't know, you might miss him if Saquon's going off and the Cowboys defense is being a little sloppy. But I'll tell you a game you really want him. Seattle, you gotta go to Seattle. Not having David Irving hurts. Do you remember I was about to say, do you remember that? But it was actually uh, last year, the Seattle game. But now that I think about it, that was actually Demarcus Lawrence who tracked down, chased down uh, Russell Wilson for like a 22-yard sack or something like that. So it, it's one of those things where if you're David Irving, dude, I don't know what you're doing. I have no idea what you're doing at this point. And you have, and you have irreparably hurt your reputation at this point. I can't... He'll get a job somewhere next year someone will bite the bullet because of what he is how rare of a like athlete he is and that he's like 26 years old he's still a kid in a lot of respects he should be just now really going into the athletic prime of his career but there's going to be people who say can this guy get through a single off season without some kind of incident and the Cowboys say there are tons of other incidents that they they haven't 
let get out, basically. This guy has been described within the organization as a ticking time bomb. That, at the time you heard that and you're like, oh, that sounds kind of harsh, but man, with the summer he's having, it's hard to argue. I, I said it before, if he could have strung together 12 good months of no trouble off the field and wreck shop in the, in the regular season or just whatever, you know, something to the tune of what he did last year. If he could have kept something along those lines and stayed out of trouble, he would be making probably $17 million a season for the next five years. He would be set for life. But he can't. There's some kind of social disconnect with him that when Hanser reached out for him, he won't take it. Not even when it's his teammates, not even when it's his coaches, not even when it's someone like Jerry Jones who will do anything he can to endear himself to his players and make them feel like they can trust him. I mean, how many guys have walked away from the Cowboys at the end of their career or whatever and had nothing but good things to say about Jerry? That's what he does. He plays the good guy these days. While Steven has to be the bad guy who's like the practical decision maker. That's their MO. And when he's not reciprocating their offer for help, or, or he's not reaching out on his own, that's that's his problem, man. So Cowboys are without David Irving for the first four games. I'm sure he'll try and appeal to at least get it trimmed down, but I, I don't see him passing that. You know, it'd be one thing if whatever he got tested for was able to be explained, but I'm sure here's I'm sure what we'll hear is that he was in California because this is something that happened and wasn't talked about a whole lot uh, during his custody struggle uh, with his ex girlfriend and baby mama. At one point, he had to leave the Cowboys, and he told the Cowboys this. He had to leave because she took off with their, I think, four-year-old, five-year-old daughter to California. And he had to go out to California and get a court order to basically get custody of her. And that's stressful, I'm sure. But I'm sure we're going to hear that the missed drug test was in that window. Okay, fine. But if that's the case, you gotta, you still got to talk with the league about that. You got to let them know. Say, hey, extenuating circumstances schedule a retake or something and then do it the fact is he never followed up from what we're hearing and it's because of that that he got basically like the all right it's an automatic fail in our book so you're now subject to the suspension i just don't see him trimming this down and we i i don't even think he's worth franchising next year for the cowboys i really don't he could have a year like last year. I don't think he's worth franchising. You're paying him $2.9 million right now, and you have people second-guessing if he's worth that after all of this. Oh, he's not going to get $2.9 million. He's now missing out on $635,000 approximately as well, and he missed out on $265,000, I want to say. Um, that's just a number I'm citing from memory uh, last year because of his suspension. So we're talking about a dude that's given up you know three quarters of a million of dollars in two seasons and we're talking about a guy that's never gotten paid he was a rookie contract a rookie undrafted free agent contract followed up by a second round tender he ha i mean he's made more money than like the average person he could be comfortable for a little while but he hasn't gotten an nfl payday that physical talent wise says he should have gotten and now I don't know that he'll ever get it. He'll get paid next year. Someone, I got to think, will take the chance on him, whether it's the Oakland Raiders or, you know, someone to that effect. But, man, I, I think I'm with Big Game James on this. I think I am officially out on David Irving. You know, there are people calling for just cutting him right now. I'm not there with that. I'm really not. Um, you can never have enough talent. And if it's like last year where he serves the suspension and then he comes in and he's doing work, great. That's what you need. And you can never have enough pass rushing 
specialists and you know game wreckers. Uh, when the late season stretch, the playoff push comes along, and then if you make the playoffs it's themselves, you got to have these guys. We've seen him in two Green Bay games in recent years. Wreck shop. He is a monster when he is motivated and when he is physically applying himself. They have to have that guy. There's no way you can convince me they're better off if they cut him right now. Is he a headache? Yes. Is he worth long-term plans? I think no. But is he worth for the rest of this year keeping? To me, that's still a no-brainer. Get what you can. You're, at this point, we're talking about squeezing the last drops out of the lemon, right? Get everything you can, and then let him go be someone else's problem. That's all my time for this video, guys. Uh, I've been DDP with the Dallas Prospect. If you like this channel, if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you want, support us on Patreon as well. Everything that we make from Patreon, uh, we invest back into the site, into the channel, whether that be better equipment or software, whether that be being able to pay contributors, or you know whatever. We try to bring you the best in Dallas sports and all things pop culture. And we are a small operation of passionate fans. We are a voice of the people, by the people. It's a tough grind, but it's something we love, so we're gonna keep doing it. Remember guys, every legend was once a prospect. Salute.